Some people like to ski. Some people like to play piano. For me, as nerdy as it sounds, my favorite hobby is learning. I just like learning things for fun.、Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because in this video, I walk and talk with Dima Surutkin, who is the founder and CEO of a startup here in Helsinki called Panda Training. What they're trying to do is disrupt learning. So me and Dima talk a little bit about that. We check out his favorite spot in town, and we also discuss what it's like to be entrepreneurs in Finland who don't speak Finnish very well. So let's see what happened. All right, so here with Dima from Panda Training. Can you tell me a little bit about what you see、um, in terms of what's lacking in education, the way people view education, and the way we learn? Like, what's What should be fixed? I think right now the biggest problem in education is is that we don't know what is good education. Right now there is a lot of、um, sort of saying that you know、um, new methods of education, VR,、yeah. e-learning, things like that, continuous learning, like everyone should learn all the time. The challenge is we don't know if they work. Yeah, like it's just like yeah we are, and it's just like a buzz. But does it does it really work? And then we're like, oh, this solution has AI, and you're like, great, does it work? What, yeah, what does it do for <laughs> like, me? Like that's that's the sense. So I think like that's it's surprising, but it's it's something that's very simple in a sense. But I I do think that it's very fundamental in terms of、uh, making progress. And、uh, there is a saying that you know you can only improve what you measure, and I I think that's that's very true. In I love that saying. Yeah. And also the reason you're there, like it's not、yeah. that we're lacking in information. Yeah, in、exactly. this world、yeah. in 2019, the one thing we're not lacking is information, right? Yeah, yeah. Like one trainer we interviewed, he was like, you know, everyone can read a book. Like I believe that if they invited me there, then everyone is smart enough in that room to read a book. Yeah.、Um, and I'm not there to kind of read out the slides to them. Yeah. But I'm there to facilitate them on a journey to change their behavior. Uh, to change certain habits, to change their attitude, and and that sort of、um, you know I think is a big change that is happening there, where we're shifting more from like a traditional classroom sort of boring training towards more sort of involved facilitation, which is not a new thing,、uh, yet still even there you know since the process is way more complicated, it's it's back to the management measurement. You know, are we are we measuring actually what we're doing, or、mm. are we just like in many cases, as we say, training is just a check mark,、mm. like oh I've done it, and then as a result, it's the first thing that goes away when we need to cut the budget. So, are there any examples from your own life, things that、yeah. you know, or people in general, things、yeah. that we know that we just don't do? Well, everyone has things like you know the the classic examples of exercising and eating well and、um, you know sleeping well. Uh, we all know that it's good for us.、Uh, most of us want to do that. Not、yeah. everyone, but many of us do.、Um, and then many of us, it's really hard to implement. Even、yeah. though we, we sort of we know the theory, but we don't really, you know, it's not really tangible enough. We we don't really know how to establish that that habit, how how to get into. So、it. having a trainer helps with that. Definitely, yeah. That's that's essentially what what their job trainer is. Trainer or a coach yeah. or yeah. a mentor. Yeah. A、motivator, exactly. exactly yeah, it, it helps、sense. you to kind of like figure out your own path. Yeah. All right. Tell us where we are now. What are you gonna show us? Well, it's a it's Santa Matala.、Um, I think in in the early days of Panda training, I used to work here quite a lot. Since I I think I I really love the place. I think it's a really nice、uh, nice design. It's a bit like industrial, but I I like it.、Um, I have never、uh, seen this. It's quite. Colorful, right? And, and very bright, since there is a lot of glass and a lot of light, and、um, just public space for people to, you know, come and work and do whatever they want. Do you think being in Helsinki is beneficial for startups,、um, or a- any more than anywhere else? Or do you think th- there's something、I、special think, about Helsinki? Well, I think there are definitely. Pros and, and cons,、um, and and, and、um, it of course depends what kind of startup you have. So for starters,、um, especially if you are in 
uh, game development. Yeah. And, and Finland is like number one almost in the world. Like, yeah. um, you know, we, we even have like um, like in a small town like um, uh, up north from Helsinki, there is like accelerators uh, for for game developers and, and things like that. But then also, I mean, just in terms of quality of life, it's very comfortable. So I mean, um, depends what kind of startup entrepreneur you are. But if if you want a good life as well, not just a company, <laughs> then. Uh, that's another plus, I guess. Okay. Um, and, and generally, I think, um, yeah, fin- Finland and, and um, is regarded quite positively. So you have some of the biggest European startup events like Slush. You have Arctic 15, which is quite big. Also a startup event. You have funding, yeah. um, especially like governmental funding from like Business Finland. Uh, w- one of the biggest benefits possibly for startups in, in terms of Finland is that the country is so small you can so easily test things. For example, uh, direct sales work brilliantly in Finland. You can call up almost anyone, whether yeah. that's like, you know, vice president of a big corporation and that's a huge benefit. Like, that is. We've been in the US and that's just not happening, you know, you, you're never going through uh, like 10, 10 gatekeepers and I, that's I think a really that kind of holds. I think that really holds innovation, and I, I think that's really a pity. Um, but here, I, I do I do think there is you know there are elements of conservatism, but there is also elements of you know progress and innovation and, and uh, a lot of things happening. And then, for example, I do sales in English in, yeah. in, in Finland, so yeah. that that's another aspect. Like you know, it's it's not really an English native speaking country. So is that a positive or a negative for you? Well, that's definitely positive. Like I, I, I really well, it's a negative from a perspective of like I can't speak. I, I, I don't have motivation to learn Finnish because of my job. But the positive is that I can actually do my job with English. You know, the thing is, I hate. I mean, I really dislike calling somebody and just speaking, forcing them to speak in another language. You know, what I mean, I feel really bad. I, I wish I could call. I'm, I'm a bit. I'm a bit past that since I also realized that a, a, a ton of companies in Finland work in English. So true. That, that's actually their native language but in a way. Almost true. That's very true. But I still feel like in a way, yeah, yeah. There is that. They're almost. not expecting. But, but you know, if I have to choose between accepting, you know, what I have right now and studying Finnish really quickly, I probably, I'm still falling for accepting. <laughs> How are you? you Finnish. How many years are you here total? Um, five, I think. I had a break in Germany okay. for a year. Um, so five. Five years. Um, I'm, I'm a, a I'm bit ashamed years. already for not speaking the language Same. very well. Um, I do understand it on like sauna level. Okay. Uh, so I, I do understand like. And the are basics. you making an actual conscious effort, or are you just letting it? I'm seek, seep I'm, in. I'm more like you know, it's it's always drilled into my mind of like, why am I not doing this? I guess I should do more of it. But then it's a question of priorities, right? So I mean, yeah. um, I, I currently haven't been doing a lot of conscious effort. I'm trying to um, learn a few words per day. Okay. Only that's this cool. year I started. I want to start going to events because I feel like I already have like the basis. I just need to go to events where I don't like understand most of things, but I can like try to 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 learn by listening, by practicing. But what we just talked about before, mm-hmm. you have to measure, right? So that's what I figured. I'm gonna actually measure the number of Finnish words that I know. How many Finnish words do I know by the end of each month? And I'm I'm actually starting to count it. And that's you helped. need to have good metrics, though. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not only that you need to measure. You need to know what you're measuring. Okay. So the takeaway is here. What I took away uh, was number one, obviously, the importance of measuring uh, and measuring the right thing. Now. I think a lot of people don't like to measure because as soon as you start measuring you might find that you come up short and some people might prefer to not know. And the number two takeaway, the importance of having a coach or a trainer or a mentor because knowledge isn't the problem, knowing things isn't the problem. We all know what we're supposed to know and if we don't know it we can access any information instantly. Right? So knowledge isn't the problem, it's acting on the knowledge. So having a coach or a mentor or a partner can really help us to you know, push forward and implement knowledge which we all already have. So yeah, uh, two good takeaways, both of them I really connect with. Uh, that's it for now, thank you for watching. 
see you next time